Welcome back to DA Griffin Hobby. My name's Dave. I found another fantastic budget deal on eBay. I'm really excited about this box. If everything turns out decent, then the price per piece in this box is under $4. What could I be getting for under $4 a piece? Let's dive in and check it out. A couple times recently, I have felt almost a psychic urge to check eBay. One of the things that I got after feeling that sensation was my $50 Bud RDC. And I still consider that a win regardless of what condition the motor is in. And no, I haven't tried to fix it yet. But every once in a while, I just get this like calling, this, this urge to go onto eBay and search for something not specific, but maybe, you know, a type of set or an era or something like that. And I end up finding something that's a really good deal. I know it's a coincidence. I mean, I could always go onto eBay and find something I want. It's not that hard. But this box has 17 of something. With shipping, it was like $63. So that's less than $4 per item. Now, some of the items might not be worth $4. Some of them might be worth four, five, ten. I don't really know. Kind of hard to tell from the pictures. Oh, I like this guy. It's double boxed. I like that. And everything's individually wrapped. I love it. If it's not already, it's, I think it's going to be pretty obvious what type of stuff this is. If I got 17 of it for $4 a piece. And that would be marks in questionable condition with plastic wheels. And this is a piece that I don't need. You know, I've got a bunch of tenders. I'm a little disappointed by the plastic wheels. I dislike plastic wheels. I mean, they are quieter, but the noise is part of the charm. Any of these that are really trashed, if I can't even use for parts, uh, I'll probably end up stripping them and trying to do some custom mark something. I want to keep a tally. Do I have a pen? I just had the idea to assign each piece a dollar value as I open it and not pay attention to the overall. So then we'll get to see if I think I got my money's worth. For instance, this rusted tender, I'm going to say that's worth a dollar. And you know what? I think that's being generous. So that's one. One dollar. What's next? A 552 Rock Island. It's seen better days. There's some rust on the wheels. Decent dents. But there's really no surface rust. I'm sure I can straighten that out a little bit, clean up the wheels, and make a good car out of this. So this one... And keep in mind, these are completely arbitrary prices I'm coming up with here. I'm going to say that's $3. I'm going to be fair because I don't usually see them for $3. So I'm going to say 4 That one's 4 A Seaboard, 91257 The car itself's in really nice condition. I'm sure it can be cleaned up even better. Problem? Plastic wheels again. But considering the condition of the car itself, the little rust thing there, I'm going to call that $4. This is one I don't have, so right off the bat, it gets an extra point. It's a 567 New York Central side dumping car. And it looks like it's in really good shape. Metal wheels, no rust underneath. Well, no excessive rust. The yellow is nice and clear. I think that's a pretty good car. And since I don't have one of these and I don't see them that much, I'm going to call that five bucks. Now, these price estimates are just what they're worth to me and not an actual value. I don't really have a good feel for the actual values of these cars, apart from the fact that I don't like to spend more than $5 per car. Some cars I've gotten free, some a dollar or two. There are very few marked cars I've paid more than 5 bucks for, one of them being the recent edition of the blue observation car. But if you ask me, that was worth it. Needs a little help. Plastic wheels, a little dirty, definitely bent, a little bent. 
It's a 554 General Cole company car. I'm going to call that three. Plenty more to go. Plastic wheels, a little bit mangled. A 556 New York Central caboose. I don't need a caboose. I have a bunch of them, and that base isn't even in great shape. So I'm going to call that $1. Another 556 New York Central caboose. This one in worse condition. Do I have to give it a value? Because I'm going to say zero. Because really, there is no reason I would have bought that. I don't need tenders, but at least this is a different one. The New York Central tenders. I like these. Don't really need one. So I'm going to call this $3. This is a pretty clean one. It's a 551 Union Pacific tender. I don't really need a Union Pacific tender. Got plastic wheels. Maybe I can paint over the Union Pacific, keep the rest of it. Due to that being in nice condition, even though I don't really want it and it has plastic wheels, I'm going to call that three bucks. Metal wheels, but the plastic couplers. I really don't like those. I mean, they work and they work with the tab couplers, so it's not a, it's not a deal breaker, but I just, I just don't like them that much. Uh, but the car is really in pretty decent shape. It's a 241 708 Baltimore and Ohio. We got some rust on the wheels and plastic couplers. Scratch that. One plastic coupler, one tab coupler. But I don't think I have this one. It's a slightly different look to it. It's a 551 New York Central tender. I like that. I'll call that five bucks. Another caboose. 556 New York Central. A little rusty. The body is in good shape. Got the ladder on the end. And it's got metal wheels. So I'll call that two. Three. We'll call it three. I'm feeling generous. This next one I have, but it's a Pensy car, so I can't complain. It's the Pennsylvania Merchandise Service car, and I like those. Metal wheels, plastic couplers. You already know how I feel about the plastic couplers. I'll call that five bucks. Okay, here's another one I don't have. A 3824 Union Pacific caboose. Makes me think maybe I'll keep the Union Pacific tender. It's got a sizable dent in the side, but I can straighten that out. Plastic wheels. Kind of looks like it was sat on. I'm calling that two bucks. We're getting close to the end here. This was almost like a six dollar car, even though I wouldn't spend six bucks on it. But it is rough. One of the couplers is bent in a tough to repair way. One of the doors is missing, which stinks when it's one of these Mark's box cars with a door that actually slides open. But it's the 59 Union Pacific cattle car. I like this car. I've got a couple of them. I've seen these in really nice condition for sale for like 45 bucks. I would spend 45 bucks on it, but it's a neat car. Even with the missing door, I'm going to be generous and say $4. Looks like this last one's a caboose. Got the uh, ladder on the end. The New York Central, I like this. It's got rusty wheels and a plastic coupler, but look at this. There's a light bulb in the middle. No pickup to make it work, but I wonder if it had a pickup and it's missing. I know some of the passenger cars were lighted. I don't know that I've ever seen a lighted caboose. The shell is in really nice shape and it has the ladder. I'll call that four. We're down to the last piece and this is kind of a make it or break it kind of a thing. It's an engine, powered engine, not a clockwork. And I've been wanting more motors, which is one of the reasons why I was really interested in this lot. Looks pretty decent from this side. Not so much from this side. Looks like the motor frame is bent and somebody did a really great repair job on the wire here for the center rail pickup. It's hard to say what I value this considering the condition that it's in and I don't know if it works. Whoa, the low rider. Yeah, that's rough. Hit it with power, didn't move. I'm not gonna keep doing it because I don't want to short something out and cause additional damage. I took the motor out. The wheels turn, the motor turns. The back of that frame is just nailed. And the front is not much better. And it obviously needs to be rewired and cleaned and serviced and everything else. those sparks well it works it doesn't move 
There it goes. Okay. It was the wire underneath that's wrapped around the pickup was holding the engine up too high. So the motor works. Not really concerned about the state of the shell since it is as damaged as it is. Maybe I'll add this to the pile of shells to get stripped and painted. We'll see, it'll probably sit somewhere and not get touched. But I needed a motor. I've already motorized my uncle's wind up. I've motorized this one that I stripped and uh, filled the keyhole on the side. And then I have this one. But this was my mom's when she was young. And I have seen this sitting on a shelf for so long. And I think this one needs a motor as well. The value to me is in the fact that it was my mom's when she was little. I would keep the wind-up parts, but I'm never going to use it as a wind-up. I think it would serve more of a purpose as something I can run. And this one, I wouldn't fill in the side or anything like that. I, I kind of like all that wear from this little nail that my grandfather most likely fashioned because the key was missing. If I can adapt this motor to this engine, maybe see if I can get detail parts off of this and use it on this. I don't know. It will be a fun little project. So the engine is not in great shape, either the shell or the motor, but the motor works. And I'm pretty sure I can fix it up nice. So considering it's a working engine, I'm calling that 10 bucks. I'm saying 10 bucks because the red streamlined engine that I run uh, my red Mark's train behind, I picked that up at a show for 10 bucks. So I think it's fair to call this one $10. So really, what's that come down to? How much did I spend versus what did I get? Let's find out. Well, I still think I won. It's a fun haul. There's some cars here that I really like, but there's also all those cabooses that I just don't need and a rusted tender that I don't need. So my added value for all of this, as I went through, is $56. But that's based on the fact that I don't particularly need the cabooses. But still, 17 pieces for $64, less than $4 a piece, with a working motor, I would have paid more for it. In a similar situation, a lot like this online, I could have paid another five bucks for maybe, maybe 10, depending if the stuff looked a little like it was in better condition. So not a grand slam home run, but still worth it. And I think a fantastic budget addition to my Marks collection. And it gives me a bunch of Marks cars to work with. So am I happy? Yes, I am. This is awesome. And I'm really happy to have another motor so I can get that other old engine going. Now I need to just stay off the internet and stay away from eBay because York is coming up and we know what happens at York. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on DA Griffin Hobby.